Good morning, everyone. My name is Yoshia, and I'm an assistant minister here. And today, I want to bring the message from Psalm 29 and how to hear the voice of God. So if you have a Bible, please open Psalm 29. <coughs> So, <clears throat> sorry, I need the water. <clears throat> so Psalm 29 talks about the voice that the road is, the voice of the road is like the storm. And the voice of God is very powerful. So it goes like this. Ascribe the Lord, you heavenly beings. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. The voice of the Lord is over the water. The God of glory thunders. So using the storm as a picture of the voice of God. The Lord thunders over the mighty water. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is majestic. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord breaks in pieces the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon leap like a calf, Syrian like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord strikes with flashes of lightning. The voice of the Lord shakes the desert. The Lord shakes the desert of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord twists the oaks and streets the forest bare. So it's showing the voice of the Lord is so powerful. And in his temple cry glory. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord is enthroned as king forever. The Lord gives strength to his people the Lord blesses his people with peace. One preacher said, I believe in Big Bang. Big Bang is scientists believe that there's a big explosion and somehow the life came together. And sounds strange to a lot of Christians, but when I think about it, when God spoke, there was nothing when God spoke, probably there, it was so powerful and there was a big explosion like Big Bang. When God spoke, he created everything just by speaking. So I'm sure when he spoke the word, it was so powerful that there was a big explosion. And you may think God doesn't talk to us much anymore. But the Bible says that the word became flesh and dwelled among us. So Jesus was the word. So probably God has a lot to say. And he wants to talk to you. He wants to communicate with you. He wants you to know him. And he will try many different ways to get your attention and tell you what he wants to tell you. So Psalm 29 says, God's voice is like a storm, powerful and majestic. And sometimes we have storm and just uh, we had a Norfolk pine in front of uh, our house. And one day storm came and just crashing down like a big thunder and didn't hit our car, just missed it. But it was so big and just uh, how strong the storm is, the wind is. So the voice of God is like a storm. However, another place, First King 19, 11 to 13, it's about the story of Elijah. The Lord said, go out and stand in the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. First one. Then a great and powerful wind 
tore the mountain apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. The strong wind came, Elijah expected God will turn up. But God wasn't there. After the wind, there was a, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. Sounds like, do you know the book called Very Hungry Caterpillar? Like that, isn't it? Just uh, keep going, same pattern. After the earthquake came a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. The third one was fire. But God wasn't there. After the fire came, a gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, he pulled his cloak over his face and went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. Then a voice, a voice said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? So all the storm, all the fire, all the earthquake came. But Elijah expected this mighty God, powerful God turning up. But God wasn't there. But this quiet, still voice came. Then God was there. So Elijah quickly pulled his cloak over his face to hide himself. That's humbling himself. And then quiet voice came to him. And what are you doing here, Elijah? So it's very interesting in the Bible that God's voice can be mighty and strong, but sometimes very quiet. And a lot of things, uh, God is both ext extremes. One time the Holy Spirit came like a consuming fire. At the day of Pentecost, the fire came from heaven. Often we see the picture of like a little candle sitting over the disciples. But the, another part said it's the tongues of fire. When the house is burning so hot, when you open the door, the air gets in and just the fire comes out suddenly. That's the tongues of fire, not the tiny candles. So it's so powerful and hot but also Holy Spirit is like a dove. When Jesus got baptized, the dove came. Dove is very gentle and quiet and delicate. So the Holy Spirit is both extreme, so powerful, but at the same time, so gentle and kind. The Jesus is the lion, lion of Judah. And also Jesus is a gentle lamb, sacrificial lamb, obedient lamb. And so you might find the Lord in the storm, but you might find him in the quiet voice. So God tried to communicate to us so many different ways, sometimes very clear, clear and sometimes just the impression just a quiet voice. Today I want to invite my wife, Olivia, and she has a few testimonies, and I ask her to just share with us. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm... No? Yeah. I'm of the belief that we all hear from God, and... He's talking to us all day. We need to tune in. When I wasn't well walking with the Lord, when I was in university, I remember sitting in the university pub and hearing a voice in my head just very clearly, not an audible voice, but just a very clear, you don't need to be here. And I said to my friends with me, Did you, do you ever think there's a voice in your head that's saying, you don't need to be here? And they looked at me and went, no. <laughs> so it wasn't until I gave my life to the Lord and made him Lord of my life that I really understood that he was speaking to me back then. My mother was a prayer, so, you know, she had her way there. So 
when I was reading the word, often when I'm reading the word, I hear him talking just, just to me, about me. So Isaiah 58 was like God's heartbeat to me. When I read Isaiah 58 when I was in my 20s, it was as though God was speaking to me about me, calling me through that passage. And that instigated a lot of things, um, including the calling that I'm in now. He'd also speak to me in a variety of ways. Like there was a, a boat on the sea one day that he said, Olivia, sometimes I'm going to ask you to put down your anchor and sometimes I'm going to ask you to pull it up and go somewhere else. When, and I remember that, that was in Japan and we're in Victoria, living in Victoria, and Yoshi said, we're moving to New South Wales. And I said, well, I haven't heard from God on that one. <laughs> and so I went to the Lord and he didn't ever say go to Port Macquarie, ever. He was silent on that. But what he did say is follow your husband. And I said, Lord, what if he's making a mistake? And he said, did you only marry him for his wings, for his success? So I believe that coming up here was a massive mistake and we'd come up here and after a few, <laughs> few weeks or years that we'd just pack up and go back to Victoria. But after 15 years, it turns out <laughs> it was a success. But there's, God is always directing us through his word and just even through the garden, when I'm gardening, he might say, Olivia, while you're weeding that, I'd like to talk to you about weeding your own heart. So he talks to you in so many ways and it's beautiful. But I just want to encourage you to listen because he is talking. He'll talk to you all in different ways, in pictures, through people, through every, every, every single way. And I don't think I've got any more that I need to say about that. I, I, I will just, this last little one. I remember I had um, two years of panic attacks. That sounds dreadful for someone who loves the healing ministry, but two years of panic attacks, and I was praying. Every time Yoshi prayed for me, those panic attacks would go. But then one day, um, I was reading the word, and I was just pleading, Lord, what is it? There's a root to this. It's a spiritual thing. I know, I don't know what it is. Please speak to me. In your word and I was reading Proverbs and all of a sudden highlighted as though it was just for me again the Lord said tie love and faithfulness around them, your neck never let them depart from you and you will have favor from man and God and I realized from this passage I'd lost love and faithfulness for someone someone who had offended my husband and I was offended surrounding that offense and I carried that and that journey of repentance, of losing love and faithfulness towards that person, set me free in the end. So I went up for prayer one day. I was healed immediately. Never had a panic attack again, except the day the person, came, someone came and talked to me about that offence again. I felt it bubbling up. I would say, no, sorry, I'm not going back to that place. So I encourage you, listen to the Lord. He's talking to you all day, every day. Thank you. When does God talk to you? A lot of times, God come and speak to me on the toilet, in the shower, <laughs> just before I go to sleep. And so God speaks to me, and I have to get up and write down what he says. And so many different times, probably that's the time I focus, or I can focus on God. So probably God waiting in the shower or in the toilet, Ah, he can, I can talk to him now. So there are so many different times that God might speak to you. Do you remember the time when we didn't have mobile phone? Next slide. So everything was connected to the cable, the code. And like 20... We have been married 23 years, so 25 years ago, I was in Japan dating my wife, and I had to make phone call from home, and it used to cost like 30 yen, like 30 cents per minute. So after talking with my wife for a long time, and the phone bill goes up, and my parents used to complain, don't talk on the phone too long. But now, we have mobile phone, and you can talk to anyone, anytime, 
most places, the signals have been improving. So unless you go to the outback somewhere, you can get the signal most time and talk to someone, connect it with someone. And did you know that Holy Spirit is like a mobile phone? You can connect with God anytime, 24 seven. And in the Old Testament, often the prophet or special priest is the only one who can talk to God. So only through the prophet that they can hear what God is saying to the nation. So it's like a fixed phone. And I had to find the public phone to make phone call to my wife. But now we have a lot of people have mobile phone and get connected with anyone. That, that's the Holy Spirit. In the Old Testament, only limited people could talk to him. After Jesus dying and breaking the veil, and we have access to God anytime. And even Jesus said once, it is better for me to go, go to heaven, because the Father can send you the Holy Spirit. So God communicates with us so many different ways, and the Holy Spirit is one of them. Yes, we can talk to God. The Spirit of God is with us. How does God talk to you? People might think the Bible, the Word, God speaks to, to us by the Word. When we pray, we talk to God, communicate with God. You may have received the prophecies from someone. People can recognize God's voice through the creation, the storm, or beauty, the sunrise, sunset, or the nature. People might get, God might talk to you through the people, the dreams, the visions, the angels. The Hebrews 1, 1 to 2 said, in the past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophet at many times and in various ways. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed heir of all things and through whom all he made the universe. So also Hebrew says Jesus is the one of the way that God wanted to communicate that his love, everything Jesus said, the Father wanted to say. So how can we hear voice of God? I made this video. There are three Christmas carols. We have heard lots of Christmas carols last month. And I put all together. And can you guess what are those three Christmas carols are? Thank you, Jara. So first song, were you able to recognize three? Is there one? songs, Joy to the World, Hope, and We Wish You a Merry Christmas. Can you recognize <laughs> 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 So 
So once you know three songs, you might pick up a little bit here and there. But it's so hard to hear the songs. You know the words, you have heard many times, but still we find it hard to recognize the songs and words. Sometimes hearing God's voice is like that. We hear a lot of voices. Every day we read and we might watch TV, we might watch the social media, read things, and we might hear, listen to friends, parents, the spouse, the kids, so many people around us influencing us. And we get so busy listening to God's voice and we miss it often. Job's friend came to give advice. Job became miserable. And lots of friends came over and tried to give advice. But they were not necessarily the godly advice. And even his wife said, curse God and die because he was suffering so much. So a lot of voices influence us all the time. And how can we recognize God's voice out of those lots of voices? Like we just heard three songs that try to hear God's voice. The first one. We have to recognize his voice first. Jesus said, my sheep, listen to my voice. So the sheep knows the owner's voice. And Samuel, the prophet in the Old Testament, when he was little, he heard the voice calling Samuel, Samuel. And he went to Eli and did you call me? Then two or three times happened and Eli said, next time you hear it, just say, here I am, Lord. And so then that's how Samuel starts talking with God, just recognizing his voice. And my dog knows when I come home, the sound and just their ears goes up and start running to the door. And we used to talk to the baby when my kids were inside the, my wife's tummy and used to talk to the baby all the time. And when they came out, they knew, they recognized the mother's vo voice. So when, if baby was crying, hear my wife's voice and they might calm down. Or they might get noisy because they recognize it's a food, food is coming. Second one, we need to know the person who God is. Often my kids come to me for certain things and then sometimes to my wife and they can work out what kind of things that they get away with. Often they go to like junk food and things, probably go to my wife and let them have yummy food. <laughs> and if they want to play games or something or technology or sports or things, they often come to me. But if my kids come to me and said, mom said I could eat 100 chocolates. Do you think they are telling the truth? Or mom said, I could stay up all night. <laughs> but I know my wife wouldn't say that. Probably, he, she might say that or not. But I must know what my wife is like. Spending time with my wife and I know the value, I know the vision together. So if my kids come and said something strange, I would say, did mom really tell you that? And I know it's wrong. So if someone said, God said, I need to leave my wife and be with this lady, does God say that? Probably not. Someone might say, God said, give an expensive car to the minister because he deserves it. Does God say that? Maybe. Maybe. 
The one John for one said, Dear friend, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirit to see whether they are from God, because many false prophets had gone out into the world. So John was saying, test every word, every prophecy, every just word that saying God said, because it has a weight on it. When someone says God said, that's so powerful. That's why politicians and through the history, they try to mix religion and politics because it has power. So we have to be very careful when we say God said this, this. You have to be sure. And when you receive it, you have to <coughs> test it and you have to analyze it according to the word of God. Would God said that. The third one, the last one, you need to reduce the noise. Like we listened to three songs. It was so busy and so hard to hear. So sometimes we need to choose what do you expose yourself to? Who do you listen to? If your friend is always negative, complaining about your, their husband or their kids, and then they get influenced and start getting negative about husband or kids. So you need to pick what you expose to. If you are listening to certain songs that make you angry, make you depressed, or watching movies, or hanging out with family members that pull you down all the time, you need to consider what you are exposing to. And have a quiet time. Sometimes as a minister, we get busy doing the church and forget to stop and listen. And we have to be still and create the time to spend time with God. So we need Holy Spirit to know God. When Jesus got baptized, the dove came, then Father spoke. You are my son, whom I love. With you, I am well pleased. Even Jesus had to receive the Holy Spirit before he started his ministry. Jesus told disciples, do not leave Jerusalem until you receive the thing from things about the Spirit of God. Because it is impossible to continue what Jesus has done. That's why we need the Holy Spirit. It's like a radio. I don't know what, when was the last time you listened to radio, but you have to tune in. Tune into the wavelength of the God to listen to God's voice. And carnal men cannot receive the spiritual things of God. If you are in the thing and you cannot stop, that may block hearing from God. We need to spend time with God and recognize his voice, reduce the noise, and get to know God. When you can do that, you might start hearing what God has been talking. He is talking to us all the time. What has God been speaking to you last three, six months? This year, what does God want you to achieve? What's the direction? What desire has God placed inside you? Psalm 37, 4 says, Take delight in the Lord, and he will give you the desire of your heart. First time I read this, I thought that's a scary scripture. God will give you desire of your heart. Might want to eat lots of junk food, desire of my heart. But the scripture, the first part is very important. Take delight in the Lord. When you think about God, when you spend time with Him, when you understand His passion, His love, 
his vision. That, that's the take delight in the Lord. Then he will place his desire inside our heart. When we are one with God, when we get excited about God and obey God, we will have the same desire with what God desires. So this is the scripture saying, if you delight in the Lord, when you are one with God, God will fulfill your desire. So this year, I want you to listen to God. Have a time, quiet time. Reduce the noise. Get to know Him. Then you might start hearing something. Use every sense to feel Him. When you listen to God, what do you feel? Sometimes we might feel warm, tingling, burning, the feeling. What do you hear? You might hear birds outside or something different. What do you see? And what do you taste? Some people say, something sweet taste comes in on their tongue. And what do you smell? God tried to communicate with you with every sense, many different ways, dreams, visions. He's talking to you all the time. So let's listen to him. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you are mighty and wonderful God who talks to us all the time. And Lord, help us to know your voice, your sound, your touch, and help us to know you. So Lord, this year, what do you want us to do? Where do you want us to go? And what do you want us to focus? So help us to know you more and hear your voice and recognize it and judge it and discern it. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.